Hello, and welcome to A Slice of Pie, the bi-weekly news -ish show that we do on this channel. How's it going, everybody? Uh, I hope you didn't miss this show last week. Uh, we did do something completely different last week, so that's uh, kind of cool. Um, in fact, actually, not doing this show weekly is helping me kind of fill out a schedule and yeah, and other than the fact that I've got a cold, which I'm sure you can hear in my voice, um, I've been very productive. Um, there is also a video slated for next Wednesday that involves um, trying to make a cell phone into a Nintendo Switch. Uh, it's a really fun video. I recorded it, edited it, and it is ready to go. So that one will definitely be out on Wednesday. And then next Friday, uh, I might have another video. This one uh, about Mario Kart Tour. So as you can see, we are packing out the lineup a lot more than we usually do and especially for this time of year. But let's 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 start talking about what happened over the last two weeks. Some sad news in the game industry. Uh, Alpha Dream, the team behind the Mario and Luigi series, unfortunately has gone bankrupt. Now, I was under the impression for a very long time that Alpha Dream was actually just another part of Nintendo, but turns out they were not. They're a bunch of X Square employees that founded their own indie studio to specifically make Mario and Luigi RPGs, which is interesting because I had no idea, but uh, when you compare the uh, Mario RPG to the Mario and Luigi series, you can see a lot of parallels. I digress though, unfortunately they are going under. They haven't been performing very well. Uh, hopefully Nintendo does step in and just makes them a first party studio. Um, but I can't, I honestly have no idea what's gonna happen with that one. Pokemon news, Game Freak. Heard your cries about trees and how ugly their trees looked. So they made you watch trees for 24 hours just to reveal the Galar version of Ponyta. Now, it is a very cute Pokemon, and honestly, it, it was an interesting reveal, but I think the salt uh, behind that live stream was just beautiful. And then also involving Pokemon, there was a rumor that there was gonna be 18 gyms in this, like a minor league and a major league gym. Um, that came from kind of a mistranslation. Essentially, there are eight gyms, but depending on which version of the game you get, you might have different gyms. Um, the number 18 doesn't make any sense whatsoever because eight times two is 16 and 18, and even then, there's probably like the first gym is gonna stay exactly the same no matter what version you have, and probably, no, the last gym can change too. Essentially, there are going to be some gyms that switch out. Um, for example, the Ghost Gym is going to be in Shield, and the Fighting Gym is going to be in Sword. There's like, going to be a lot more variance between the versions this time around, which is kind of a cool thing, because uh, just a generation ago, it didn't matter which version of the game you got, you could pretty much get everything, and you could wander trade around until you eventually got all of the Pokemon you need. Seems like they're focusing very heavily on features that will make each game separate. Doom Eternal got delayed. To be completely honest, it's a Bethesda game, so delaying it's probably a good thing. Um, Doom was such a pivotal comeback for the series that if they want to continue that, they really should take their time with Doom Eternal and make sure that it is as good or better than the version that came out in like, what was it, 2016? Some uh, controversial news. Uh, Blizzard has banned a Hearthstone competitive player for voicing pro support towards Hong Kong. Now, this player has the right to voice their support, and I really don't understand why Blizzard stepped in other than the fact that they're owned partially by Tencent and the fear of possibly being banned by the Chinese government. Let's just say the fans, myself included, aren't exactly happy with them right now. Um, if you went on Imgur at all over the last few days, there's like nothing but dogpile posts on Blizzard right now. Um, 
to the point that like every five posts were about it. It's certainly an interesting situation and Blizzard has found themselves in a PR nightmare all in service of China. And speaking of shitty news, or sort of shitty news, depending on how you view this, net neutrality. Unfortunately, it has been upheld that the FCC did have the authoritative power to end net neutrality. But there is a caveat. States now have the power to regulate net neutrality on their own. So essentially, Ajit Pai, he got rid of the big overarching regulation, but now that states can do their own thing, states like California, New York are going to put something in place that will limit the ability for ISPs to do whatever they want. And because those two have some of the densest populations in the entire country, uh, yeah, net neutrality is going to be pretty much upheld entirely by like state legislation. And let's face it, ISPs aren't going to want to cookie cutter to each state. Um, an example that I gave to uh, my roommate was Florida could say, well, you know, your lines aren't hurricane proof, so uh, you need to make everything hurricane proof. And if it's not, we'll fine you. And then Comcast will legitimately have to do that or pay the fine. Joy-Con problems. Wow, I really don't have very many good stories today. Uh, so, Joy-Con Drift is a problem with the Nintendo Switch Lite. It appears that these sticks are definitely faulty, and Nintendo is in fact repairing them. I'm actually really surprised that Nintendo didn't fix the problem that they know is a problem before releasing the Nintendo Switch Lite. Like, how hard is it to fix? Especially because the Pro Controllers don't have the issue, it's only the Joy-Cons. So, because they're using Joy-Con parts, to make the controller for the Switch Lite, it ends up having the same problem. Okay, and now let's start talking about some actually positive stuff. Noctua, all black fans. Yes, yes, I need, I need that. Um, in collaboration with Linus Tech Tips, uh, Noctua is releasing all black uh, heat sinks and coolers. No Chromax accessories, just out of the box, all black. That is awesome. Um, I'll probably end up picking up one of those coolers because personally, I do love the performance of them. Razer, uh, they made a new Razer Siren called the Razer Siren Emote. Razer Siren Emote allows you to display an 8-bit emote on your microphone. Why? I don't know. Um, maybe you're leafy and you need a chin replacement. Um, that's like a 2015 meme right there. Uh, they also, also, and I'm more excited for uh, for this, released the Razer Kraken Kitty Edition, which is way better than it should have been. So, I'm gonna grab my Krakens just to show this. Razer released the Krakens years ago. They released the pure green ones, which are over there. Um, and then the Razer USB, USB 7.1s, that whole shebang. At one point, as a joke, they made cat ears for the Krakens and PewDiePie wore them in like every video for like a while um, with his custom Razer Krakens. So they became a thing. Now, the Razer Kraken Kitty Editions, I don't want to call them cyberpunk because it's not really, it's kind of cyberpunky. These things, they have the ears built in which normally looks really cheap. I think the Ariana Grande ones with like the plastic all around them look really ridiculously cheap, but these don't look terrible. And then they're actually RGB LED illuminated, which again, actually kind of cool. And they come in pink and they come in black. Um, it's sad to say, but I want it and I will probably buy it at some point. I digress. Weird stuff coming out of Razer. I'm kind of okay with it because it's different than everything else that everyone else is doing. In fact, actually speaking of different, um, Gamers Nexus did a video about this graphics card. Uh, it is the cute pet edition of the RX 
5,800, not, or not 5,800, um, 580, weird cut down edition. But the Shroud, the Shroud is just great. It is the weirdest looking graphics card I've seen in a while. And I like that. I like that there's something different going on. I think that's kind of why I like all the other products that we just talked about is they're different. And yeah, there's just, it's just all there is to it. So if you had a Vega graphics card and you were wondering when you were going to get that image sharpening ability, well, you can do it now. Uh, they just added support for the Vega graphics cards after a bit of pushback from people who had them. Um, if I would have still had my Vega in my system, I probably would have been one of those people pushing back. <laughs> uh, we know how that happened. So now you can uh, get the image sharpening on your Vega graphics cards, which is cool that it was just a free update that rolled out. AMD also announced the RX 5500 and 5500M. These are actually replacements for the 5800, or not 5800, <coughs> the 580, the RX 580, uh, which is still on the Polaris uh, architecture. So the new card is on our DNA versus Polaris and is actually going to be uh, the replacement for the low end. I'm actually kind of looking forward to that card just because the RX 58, I keep saying 58, the RX 580 was actually one of my favorite cards for 1080p gaming. It really does well and its price point is like 150 to $200. Like that's an absolute bargain for what you can do with it. And it really is a great card for the entry level. But you may have a problem getting your hands on them because Apple is causing a seven nanometer shortage. The new iPhone is actually very popular as I kind of believed it would be. The price is competitive, the features are compelling enough, and it's doing well. Well, TM TSMC, the company that makes the seven nanometer nodes for AMD also makes them for Apple. And so inadvertently, there is now a Ryzen shortage, which is causing the Ryzen prices to go up. And there will be at some point an RX 5000 series shortage, which will also cause those to go up if this continues, which it might because Apple also released a brand new iPad for just over 300 bucks with Apple keyboard and pencil support, which makes it a really compelling buy. Um, I can't believe I'm actually saying like Apple and affordable in like the same vicinity. It's really weird and I feel uncomfortable talking about it. All right, and that's it. I'm gonna end this video before I die on camera. Because <laughs>